Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Our region's business. Innovation, transformation, momentum. Improving our communities and driving technologies that will shape our region for generations. The collaboration that brings vitality, prosperity, and life to living. Stay with us for the coming half hour as we examine in depth our region's business. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on Our Region's Business, Carnegie Mellon University sets its sight on innovation and energy with a new Energy Institute. Plus, Highland Patterson may be 125 years old, but the company is still on the cutting edge when it comes to energy technologies. But first, the promising outlook for energy employment in our region, then the challenge ahead in educating, training, and attracting enough workers to fill the jobs that are going to be opening up. We'll share two perspectives on our region's energy jobs outlook, a survey of a cross-section of energy employers that has identified 14 high-demand, hard-to-fill jobs. Get these skills, and energy companies are likely to beat a path to your door. Plus, the jobs outlook if Shell proceeds with construction of a proposed ethane cracker in Beaver County, Pennsylvania. You might want to tell your kids to pay attention. There could be a future career opportunity in all of this for them. Jim Kaufman is an executive consultant with Development Dimensions International, which just completed the energy workforce analysis on behalf of the Allegheny Conference and the Energy Alliance of Greater Pittsburgh. And Jim Futrell is Vice President of Market Research and Analysis with the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance, which just released its own analysis of the impact of the proposed shell cracker. The PRA is an affiliate of the Allegheny Conference, which co-produces this program. Welcome. Good to see both of you. Thanks, Thanks. for having us. Yeah, a lot of big news this week related to uh, energy and especially where we're headed in terms of employment demand. Jim, I'm going to start. Jim Futrell. i got to two Jims this morning. <laughs> uh, I'll start with you, Jim, on kind of what we know right now about the mm -hmm. impact that, that energy is having on, on our greater Pittsburgh region today. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it is a very important industry in the 32-county greater Pittsburgh region. Uh, you have really about 60,000 people working in what we define as the core energy uh, industry and that's everything from coal mining and gas drilling to engineering and uh, distribution and the manufacturing of uh, components and supplies. Uh, collectively they those uh, jobs generate roughly uh, 25 billion dollars in uh, economic activity in the region which is about 15 percent of the regional economy. So that's a significant percentage. How many places are these people working at? Uh, Roughly about 1,700. So 1,700? Yeah, so they're all over the place and uh, you know, probably in uh, your town and mine too. Mm -hmm. And the 25 billion, that would represent the multiplier effect, kind of the ripple effect through our economy? Right, yeah, that's, um, th that's a contribution to the gross regional product. So that's uh, kind of the value added to the regional economy by that activity. Okay, and so that ranks at what? Energy right up there with a big sector like what? Financial services? Financial or services, manufacturing? manufacturing, yeah. So it is you know, one of the big ones. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of overlap with those sectors, too, because, I mean, the tentacles kind of reach into uh, most parts of the economy. Sure. Well, we've seen a lot of law firms and other types mm -hmm. of companies setting up shop in the region because the energy industry is here. So, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So how do you tell where one ends and the other begins? So that's kind of where we are right now. Significant uh, chunk of our regional economy and a lot of activity happening here. The next question is, where are we headed? And, Jim, that's really what you all at DDI set out to study, right? Yeah. You know, there's 700 organizations in our 10-county uh, region. Okay, that so within the 10 counties roughly seven eight hundred right, out of the right. 1700 Jim was talking so we about, focused right. there okay. for this part of the study and we went out to those organizations in a, in a two-part study the first part was an online survey where we asked the organizations what are your top jobs that you're forecasting that you're going to hire for over the next five and ten years and and we also asked them how confident they were in their ability to fill those jobs and so with that with that we could come up with well, what are the jobs that people are saying uh, are most important, most critical, they're going to hire the most of, yet they're most concerned that they won't be able to find the people in the current workforce. And so that helped us identify the 14 jobs that you mentioned. Yeah, and this is through the end of the decade, mm -hmm. right? So you're mm -hmm. really looking near term, but they're already having some stress in some they of are. these job they categories, are. right? Yeah, they're telling us that the reasons that they're not confident and able to find the people are just the lack of, of both the technical skills and, and some of the behavioral skills, like communication and teamwork and decision making. 
Okay, so uh, some examples of the 14. I mean, is there anything that they have in common? You know, um, one thing that they have in common is is sort of the level of education, if you will. Of the 14 jobs, only one of them required only a high school degree. And three or I think four of them required a four-year degree. The majority of them required high school plus. That could be high school plus a certificate, high school plus an associate's degree. So we're talking about 14 critical jobs that what they do have in common is some degree of preparation beyond high school, but not necessarily a four-year degree. So that means that folks with a lot of young people especially, but I guess a lot of people with a variety of interests, a variety of education level, if they can get these skills, That's right. there, there, are, there are opportunities out there. And there are opportunities across the multiple sectors that Jim mentioned. One of the striking things about the study was that uh, the, the skills that are required are not just required in wind or solar or, or coal or, or gas. Um, a lot of these jobs resided across multiple sectors, some across all seven sectors. Okay. So, so the opportunity, if you have the right skills, you're not necessarily pigeonholed into a single sector. There's opportunities across the board. Are we talking about lots of jobs between now and the end of the decade? Lots of jobs. We looked in, in our sample, we looked at 37 organizations in our online survey across um, large, medium, small organizations, and a very conservative estimate of the number of jobs they're looking to hire for over the next, uh, from now till 2020, is around 7,000. So 7,000 from just the just 37. 37. So out you don't of the seven or eight hundred. You the don't have to do the math, right? Yeah. It's it's a big number. Big number, tens yeah. of thousands that we got to find to fill the pipeline. Yeah, and there's concern, and and of of those seven thousand, two thousand of those came from those difficult to fill jobs. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's just a bigger number as you expand that out. Really critty. I only have a little bit of time left, Jim, but I do want to ask you about the, the, the uh, analysis you all did uh, at the Pennsylvania Economy League and Pittsburgh Regional Alliance of the, uh, of the potential impact of the Shell uh, petrochemical facility mm -hmm. up in Beaver County. What, what kind of, there's a construction phase and there's an operations phase. What do you see happening out there? Well, I, um, this is really um, a tremendous economic opportunity for the region. Uh, it's going to be a huge facility, so it, it's the peak of its construction phase, which will be several years. That peak year, uh, there will probably be up to 10,000 people working at, on the site at one time. Uh, that will generate um, an additional support, an additional 8,000 jobs in the economy. So and that's everything from you know, the people who are going to be selling in the supplies and the building materials to the engineers to you know, the people working at the local restaurants. So 18,000 jobs during just the peak year of construction. How about on an ongoing basis, so once it's up and running? Mm -hmm. Well, it, uh, most uh, uh, facilities of this nature employ roughly 400 individuals. You know, those tend to be highly skilled, highly compensated positions, but since they're taking you know, ethylene, which is essentially a byproduct of natural gas, and converting it into ethane, which is something that you find in many products you use on a daily basis, everything from plastics to detergent, uh, there's a huge multiplier effect. So those 400 jobs, uh, you know, the value they're creating through that production process will support anywhere from two to 8,000 uh, two to 8,000 jobs in the economy. Wow. So Mm -hmm. So that many more jobs we've got to fill because your projection wasn't in Jim's numbers. So right, exactly. Clearly so. uh, an enormous opportunity for our region, but also a workforce development challenge as well. Big things to think about. Jim Kaufman from DDI, Jim Futrell from the Pittsburgh Regional Alliance. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Carnegie Mellon breaks ground on a new energy institute right here in our region's backyard. Stay with us.